Hello. Yo, how's it going? Have you got the phone up in your ear? No, I've just got it sitting in my sitting in my desk in front of me. Hello, can you hear me better now? Aye, that sounds better. I don't even know what I'm going to call this. I was thinking about calling it one day. I suppose it depends what your if that's what your plans are going ahead. Like if that's your idea where you do something with someone, you know, you make a video, you do the podcast, whatever, and that it kind of fits. I don't know if I think it's more to do with the fact that I don't know if any, anyone could stomach me for any longer than that. <laughs> um, did you see that thing I put on Facebook the other day or yesterday? It would have been. Uh, what was that? So my eldest. Oh Aaron, yeah. Just at the, the wee outdoor skate park. Yeah. There. So Aaron went to Irvin, the Irvin skate park, and there was six young guys, young men. So they were 20, 21, 20, 21 and uh, Aaron. Um, Aaron's about three weeks away from being better than me. I'm just putting that out. <laughs> was doing so he can rock to fakie now. So he done one in one of the small three, like three foot quarters, and one of the one of the older guys was like, like well in we man, like just kind of shouted it. Yeah. Um, Aaron basically just made the decision there, man. It's like I'm skating with you. That's it. Like you don't get a say in this now. Like. I'm, <laughs> was on now my new best friends. When Kirst, Kirst, so Kirsty FaceTimed me from the park to tell me this, and uh, she told me the story and stuff like that. So like, about how good they were, they never swore once. Do you know what I mean? Like they totally, and one of the, Kirsty was saying that one of the boys smoked, and he never lit a fag the full time that Aaron was there, and he was there for three hours. Like it was like, they just totally set an amazing example for him. So when I posted it on Facebook, commending them, like that's what I love about it, is that bit where it's like, there's a guy in my street who's in his 50s who skates, right? I'm 33 and my six year old skates and we can all stand out that front door and do skating together. Yeah, Something that's like. just what you don't get with like conventional sports. The scenario that you've just talked about, like going to an astro pitch or something like that and there's a group of 20 year olds playing and a youngster wants to go and get involved it just it just doesn't happen anywhere near the same amount that it does in these sorts of sports gonna go and see what tosh is up to jesus <laughs> So how did you how did you get into it? Uh, like, what was your I think so. Like, I played. I grew up just enjoying any sport. So like, I you know I didn't really like sitting at a desk at school. As I got like a little bit older, like you know early teens, and you become a bit wiser to like you know what's going on and and different things. I just gradually started to kind of dropping away from it, especially football. Like football was something I played a lot and I was like in an SFA youth development like squad and stuff like that. And typically like, you know, with Scotland having, you know, the religion aspect and football and stuff like that, I just started kind of taking a back seat from it more and more. Around about the same time, I think I, I went snowboarding for the first time when I was about 11 or 12. That just completely changed my outlook on life. <laughs> like as mad as that sounds I think it was probably the first dose of adrenaline I ever got it just completely changed like I just became obsessed with it so then it was it was mountain biking and bikes and jumping on a BMX and jumping on a skateboard and then so yeah it just it just started from that and then I remember maybe being like 14 13 or 14 we had quite a good little crew of us that just used to kick about on bikes like all the time. We started building like jumps down at a zone down quite close to the river air. And it became kind of well known amongst like biking community, mountain bikers, BMXers, everyone. So there ended up being quite a few people that used to travel down to it. And one of them ended up being Dave. I think the first time I saw him, he was like, going like max three into a, a gap over like a full path down the river and he like tried a no foot can for those that don't know like you're you're in the air you take your feet off right over the frame and like kind of kick to one side i remember just being like blown away and that was it we were pretty much like really good mates ever since that day <laughs> and uh, years later we own a skate park together
there's a resilience with stuff as well that I think you learn because the, the learning curve it's a steep curve and you really need to work at it and I think it really sets you up for later in life you're constantly battling something and I think that's a it's a life skill that you should have like everybody should learn do you know what I mean? For sure, and even more so now, like like seeing kids like come in that just are so used to this like instant gratification, like playing Fortnite, going on social media, like everything's just so instant. It, it's this funny thing watching like kids now like literally try something like twice and they just like give up on it. You do understand that like it's taken me like 16,000 goes to like learn to be able to do that. Like it's it's not, you, you can't just learn everything instantly. So there's so many other things in our society that gives them this instantaneous thing. We didn't think on Monday we're going to build a skate park and by Friday have it open. Like that's just not how the world works. So it's, you know, I think a lot of it can be kind of related to learning a kickflip to the rest of your life. So the creative bit I think is about, I mean, like if it wasn't for skateboarding I wouldn't have got into graffiti um, I probably wouldn't listen to the music I listen to I wouldn't have watched the films that I watch like get into all that sort of stuff because I think it kind of goes hand in hand yeah. like it is a very artistic thing when you take skaters like like the guys like Ed T Chris Haslam Day One The Gons I think that's what's amazing for me is just how different everyone can be, but still share this common thing. Do you know yeah, what I mean? It's, it's almost like a fingerprint. Everyone's got hands, but like it's the fingerprint aspect. Like it's just, I think as well, it's just like such a good gateway drug into creative. Like, like you said, like the knock-on effect of like you, you know, you saw a skateboard and you picked up a skateboard, you skated the graffiti aspect, the art aspect, like that just opened up like a whole other thing. And for me, it was like the photography and film and stuff like that that goes with it. Never once did I want to take photos or video or whatever of us kicking a ball about the park. As soon as I got into these sports, like trying to capture it, what I've noticed as well, it takes a little while to kind of get a good like relationship between the filmer and the subject you know it definitely the more i've filmed with like bailey the more i understand like what looks better like what he tends to do out of where like it's it's definitely a, a fun process to go to go try so what's your goals for shred man what's what's the what's what's in the future what's what he's looking to do or is it more about really short term stuff because of what's happened well yeah it's comp I mean if you'd asked me that in January the goal has always been like Shred was always like the kind of first crack at it the tester like to make sure that we could we could make it work the ultimate goal has always been build our own place really like we want to have our, our like fully like custom built place there to be a skate park and we want it secured for like the next 20 years so that's like the the big thing you know at the, at the moment renting a place like there's breaks in the lease there's there's all this different factors that can happen and it's happened we've watched it happen to to other parks up and down the uk the industrial estate they're on is going to be bulldozed for renovation or you know landlords get a better deal from someone else like there's so many variables one of the things we wanted to do was like get our own place built so that so that it was kind of secured for the next 20 years um because it's a it's a facility that's like much needed down our way so that was obviously that that would have been the goal kind of at the start of the year but now really the short-term goal at the moment has been survival that's pretty much the guts of it at the moment um it's a great place man and there's a great i mean i remember i, I don't even know i think it was dave that messaged me first was that to do the first like artwork like along the the street section yeah to do the first to do yeah. the first from then i've been back the shark thing in the big wall the that Dave Mira one and the foam pit the Cthulhu the Dark Lord Cthulhu and now the Phelps thing and I was saying this to you the other day as well but like you not only have you, you guys provided that facility to skate there is no legal spaces in Ayrshire 
for people like me to paint, to have you guys there who, like, if, if, if I'm completely honest with it, the first two times that I came, it was commissions. Yeah. You no, know I mean, it was like, we're going to pay a local artist, which I don't like that terminology when people go, oh, he's a local artist. That kind of annoys me. But he's commissioned me, and then off the back of that, it was like the relationship. Like, I think I get re I get on really well with you guys. With the guys we use. Definitely, definitely. We have a, a very similar mindset with certain things and all that. For sure. So when I came and said, I've got this idea to do the Dave Mira thing, and then I'm doing this mad thing <laughs> with balloons. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the Cthulhu thing and then it's like I want to paint Jake Phelps and I want to do that sort of stuff like there's a you, you are adding more to the culture than do you know what I mean than just having a space where you can roll about like there's other things that you're producing and you're allowing other people to do and um, I, I mean I, I can't thank you enough for that pretty much it just goes to show like if you're open to ideas then it would kind of go against everything that we want to do if we were trying to say no to people or trying to like stop their creativity like why why would we try and curb that and look what's happened with just saying yes or, or giving all we've done is let you do like you to the best of your ability like that's that's all we've done it just goes to show that like a friendship has like come out of it amazing pieces of artwork all our like social media is like been kind of boosted from it like it just I'm sure you're the same like for us it just seems like a no-brainer but you still encounter so many people that just aren't willing to give people the chance <laughs> cool man well look thank you very much and uh, and I'll catch oh, up with you alrighty cheers man have a good Bye, one thank you. you too man cheers see ya bye bye bye, bye.